Hi folks, I'm going to show you another way to make a coil for your crystal radio. In my previous video on how to make a crystal radio, I showed you how to do this one, where you sand off the top of the coil in order to expose the copper underneath. But what if you exposed the copper between two adjacent turns? In that case, those turns would act as one. And if you do that too often, then you shorten your coil, and the coil doesn't work as well. So here's the other type. In this case, instead of sanding off the top of the coil, you create taps into different areas of the coil. In this case, every 10 turns. And then you simply clip onto any of these taps. So I'll show you how to make one of these instead. In case you haven't watched my other video, I'm going to show you how to do this from scratch, uh, but a little quicker. First thing I do is I put on a strip of tape, and then put on another strip on top of that. And I pull up the top strip of tape. And the reason for having the bottom strip here is so that I'm not pulling up cardboard as well. And I pull up my wire so that I have about a foot sticking out right here. And uh, start the coil close to one edge just to make sure I have room for the rest of the windings. Tuck in the end so it's not in my way. And start winding. Do 25 turns. And 25. Pull up this tape again. Winding in place. Now, before starting the next coil, for this particular winding technique, <clears throat> what I first do is I want to cut this piece of tape, the top piece of tape, lengthwise in half, all the way. And you'll see why in a minute when I wind the coil. Go. Okay, so I have two halves of tape here. Okay, to start it, the first half down, lift up the second half. Pull out about a foot extra of wire here. And start the coil only underneath the second half. And start it uh, for this coil about an eighth of an inch from the first coil. And then lay down the tape. Tuck this end in. and do just 10 turns. Then stop. I'll tell you what to do next. And 10. Okay, now for the 10th one, pull up the first half of tape. Pull it back. And tape that 10th winding into place. Make sure it's close to the other windings. There you go, good job. Then, pull about an inch of wire out and make a loop. And pull up the first tape, or the second tape rather. And then, after the loop, Tape that piece into place. Again, pushing it as close as you can against the other windings. Oh, very good. So what you've got now is a loop sticking up right in the middle of these two pieces of tape. And you can continue with winding ten more now. So just tuck that loop back so it's out of the way. And now wind 10 more and do this again and again and again. We want a total of 90 um, windings turns for this whole coil, the second coil. So uh, that's 9 times 10. So we'll do 9 more of these pieces of 10. So we'll have 9 loops, all the, well, 8 loops, I guess, all together. The last one won't have a loop. So let's see, that's uh, one turn, two, Okay, so now that's done, I'm going to 
give you a usual foot or so of wire and cut it. Now the next thing you need to do is, uh, I'll just tuck this out away for now, all these little loops that I have sticking up are for tuning the coil. And uh, they're right now they're all insulated, they have enamel on all of them. And what I need to do is take off the insulation so that I can contact them electrically. So two ways of doing that. One way is with sandpaper where you just sand away at the coil, at the, at the wire. Um, I'm going to split them here, that'll make it easier. That's one way to do it. And the other way to do it is to, or that I know of anyway, is to take a knife, like in my X-Acto knife, and just scrape at it. But you don't want to scrape, to, that works pretty good, uh, you don't want to scrape too uh, hard or press too hard because then you'll just cut the wire and now you'll have a short piece of wire where you need some long wire. That works quite well actually. I'm going to go with that instead of sandpaper. Other ways are to dip this in some kind of, I'm not sure what it is, um, acetone or something that'll eat away at the enamel. You just dip it in. And uh, I've never done that though. So I'm just going to keep doing this to all these pieces here. Okay, that's done. Next, take each pair. Remember, I, I cut them. So each, each part of the loop and just twist them and give them lots of twist. Twist them fairly tightly. That way you make sure you get lots of good electrical contact between them. So you're basically putting the wire back together. Do that for each pair. Okay, and this is what you end up, something like this. Now, take all the other wires that you've tucked away here and just scrape all the ends of those too because you're going to need to make electrical contact with these too. And there we go, there's the finished coil. Okay, so I removed the coil that I made and demonstrated in the first video and I replaced it with this one and wired it in as per the diagram. And uh, this one doesn't need the wiper blade, the uh, tuner bar anymore because it has these things for tuning instead. These are actually called taps, each of these little uh, pieces sticking out are called taps because you use them to tap in. So what I've got is an alligator clip here, things you can buy at like Radio Shack for example. Connect one end to ground, just like I did with the wiper bar. And then connect the other end to any of the taps that you want to try. So if we want to try this one, then we connect it there. If we want to try right here, we connect it there, and so on and so forth. So I'll put in the earpiece here and try to find something. I got something right there. I'll just put in the earpiece at the microphone here so you can hear it too. So this works quite well. I've gotten four or five stations so far. Well, thanks for watching. Be sure and check out my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org, where you'll find more crystal radio related and other science and tech videos. That includes my step-by-step -step instructions for making the crystal radio you saw in this video, another one on crystal radio troubleshooting and tips, rain-powered piezoelectricity, and more. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon!